Now I ran onto this really neat little trick that somebody did to keep their water from freezing without the use of electricity. And I thought, wow, that would be a really neat thing to try. So I'm doing an experiment today. Nobody's very eager to come out. You guys not going to come out today? I cannot stand winter. And here's why. Frozen water. Winter makes things that are supposed to be so easy, like giving your animals water, for example, so complicated. Well, at least it busted out this morning. Yesterday, that thing was frozen rock solid. No matter how many times I dropped it on the ground, it would not break for nothing. So I took it into the house and I was gonna run it under the hot water in the bathtub. Well, our hot water line to the bathtub was frozen. So then I just set it down in the house and then I went out and did the chores, came back in and it was still frozen. It would not pop out of there for nothing. So I had to take it into the other bathroom and luckily that hot water there wasn't frozen and so I ran in under that and then was able to pop it out. Right here is the ice from it yesterday. Now I personally do not like chicken waters. I have spent so much money on those things and I have had so many problems. I've bought the, the really expensive nice metal ones and had them rust within a couple of years. Um, I had another metal one that just leaked. It wouldn't hold water for nothing. And then I had um, quite a few plastic ones that have either broke, cracked, or they leak. And then on top of it, the chickens will kick dirt into them. Even if I set them up on bricks, they'll still manage to kick dirt, bedding, all that into them. And then not to mention that, they're just a pain in the... Well, you know, to have to take apart every day and clean and put back together. It is just so much easier just to dump that thing right there and fill it up every other day. And it provides plenty of water for all of the animals and on the really hot days, I don't have to worry about them running out of water. But in the winter, they're not so handy because they get frozen solid as a rock. So when that happens, we just give the chickens water in the bucket like this. Now we do not have electricity to our coop. The only way we can have electricity is to run <coughs> extension. You be quiet. To run extension cords out here, and we don't like to do that. Um, it puts a strain <coughs> on our breaker. Now Brooke did get a heated chicken waterer for her rabbit right here, and it's working okay, so so okay for the rabbit. The problem is she's running that off the side of our house, which that is connected in with uh, our bathroom and we run a small space heater in our bathroom to stay warm because it is really cold back there and the two the combination of the two when it gets really cold it it snaps our breaker all the time it's basically out of the question um, not only safety wise to be running a whole lot of extension cords all over the place but also because um, our breakers just can't handle all of the extra added electric flow through them. So that means in the winter time, dragging buckets of water out every day for the chickens when it's really, really cold. Now normally I can get by with filling up a bucket and taking it to them one time in the morning and it will usually last all day. Like yesterday it got up into the 40s. So this bucket of water was still thawed out that night when I went to chores. Now, I ran onto this really neat little trick that somebody did to keep their water from freezing without the use of electricity. And I thought, wow, that would be a really neat thing to try. So I'm doing an experiment today. Um, I read about it on a blog. I think the blog it is called a, a Chick in Her Garden or something like that. I will leave the link to it in the description below if you'd like to check it out. But what she did is she would take a 20 ounce pop bottle and put a quarter of a cup salt in there and make a salt water solution and put it into her chicken water. And then that would keep her water from freezing at night. And I thought that was a really neat idea. So I decided I'm gonna try that, but I'm gonna use that bucket right there and a two liter bottle filled with a cup of salt and water. Now what I like about using that two liter bottle in that size of a bucket is that 
there's no risk of it being totally submerged and the salt water possibly leaking out into the chicken water because even if this would get knocked over like that it's still not going to spill out in fact that might be a better way to have it actually i'll just put it like that so we'll check back tomorrow morning and see how it does Okay, right here is the tub that I use for water in the barn and it is frozen rock solid so I drag it out here in the sunlight and hopefully by this afternoon it'll be thawed out enough that I can get the ice out of there. But for now I'm just going to fill up a couple of buckets like this. Now if my little experiment works I'm going to go ahead and do that out here too. But for right now, the reason I'm not doing it is because I don't have any more 2 liter bottles and I need to buy more salt. Now we do have electricity in the barn and I have considered getting one of those heated buckets for out here for, for the water. The problem with that is the electrical wiring in our barn is really, really old and it can't handle hardly anything at all. About the most it can run is our electric fencer and lights. Otherwise, I think that if I would plug in an electric heated bucket or something like that, it would the breaker would blow right away. In fact, we don't even plug our tank de-icer into the barn electricity. We plug it into the shop over there. One of the first things on our to-do list is to eventually get this barn rewired. So if this salt water in a bottle experiment works, it will be amazing because then I won't have to worry about having to plug in a heated bucket or anything like that. Well morning chores are done for today and so I'm gonna run in the house and get some breakfast and see what the kids are up to. So be sure to check back tomorrow and see how my experiment is working.